Welcome back to the Federal Insights Infrastructure Evolution, sponsored by Verizon here on Federal News Network. My guests today are Brian Shromsky, the managing partner of federal government and public safety for Verizon Wireless, Lamont Copeland, the managing director of federal solutions architecture for the Verizon Business Group, and Scott Anderson, distinguished architect at Verizon Federal. And one of the big initiatives that is in the federal government is the idea of better user experience, better customer experience. And this is by mandate, by law, and by what agencies really want to do. And so they are looking at modernization, including of their networks, to be able to improve customer and employee experience. Tell us how that can happen with some of the new network technologies. Scott? Yeah. So uh, first of all, you heard uh, you heard Lamont earlier, and and you heard Brian earlier. You know, talk about the user. Talk about you know the importance and value of the user. And one of the things that we want to do, and 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 you know, everybody actually so far in the call has mentioned it. You know, is understanding the customer's applications. Back in the old days, we used to call it the enterprise architecture. Um, literally, you would have this massive. I mean, just massive uh, eye chart. And, you know, it would say, if you want to save a PDF, use this application, right? I mean, they were down to that level and they were very cool. Um, but the reality is none of the enterprise architectures of the past would actually consider the transportation protocols. How did it work? Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Brian mentioned the, the concepts of 5G and the value of, of controlling drones with 5G and the value of that ability. But the other side of that is, you know, users have specific needs as they do their day to day job, as they live within their functional world. Uh, and, and Lamont mentioned, you know, remote workers in COVID that, that reverses how you do everything in your life, that reverses how you you function. And so one of the things that we have, we have a new concept that we brought out a little over a year ago called NAS. Uh, everything's as a service now. And this is the network as a service. So and small AAS. Uh, network as a service within NAS or network as a service, there is a really important concept. It's called application aware routing. Now, what application aware routing does is really take the next step, right? So, for example, let's go back to, to Brian's drone flying around. Uh, you know, it's on 5G, it's dumping a lot. In fact, because it's on 5G, it's probably dumping a lot more video data. Uh, and we need to determine in that video data what are we critically looking for. Um, and it, and it may just be that that drone in the case and, and Brian's awesome example, right, of a search and rescue mission, any video with movement becomes critical video, all the rest of the video you can throw away. Well, that's what application aware routing allows us to do. We can immediately say, oh, drone, drone 16 has seen movement. Uh, drone 17 has a clear infrared image of a, of a body that is warm, right? So still alive, still pumping blood. Uh, so those are two things that we can do within application aware routing. Now, that information then can immediately be routed out of the locale where the people are and sent to somebody that can act on it. Right. And there's hundreds of other examples. My favorite example is one that uh, Lamont will remember. It's very painful. Uh, we had a customer that was screaming and yelling because they were doing an all organization teams meeting and that all organization teams meeting kept failing. And, and they were talking to us about, hey, Teams is failing. Well, with application aware routing, I can fix that problem very quickly. I simply go to one location, connect to that location, and I change the importance of the application Teams. Now, all of a sudden, Teams is the most important application on the network. You don't lose packets. You don't lose connections. And when you're talking about that remote telephone user who's dialed into the Teams meeting, they now have that much higher quality connection, that much better connection all the way through. And we're able to empower the network to respond to the organization. And let me just follow up with a quick question. Can that activity of that network aware routing, can that be automated? That is, you don't have to have a console operator or a big programming stream to, uh, to accomplish that? That's an awesome question, Tom, and, and absolutely. Uh, so, of course, you know, obviously, and we'll 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 do the the linear progression. It starts with the concepts of uh, machine learning, uh, and basically, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the machine learning rules to gather information about how applications are used within the organization, about what they're doing with them, about where the failure points are. Right? It 
you can manage applications for a customer, but if nobody can log in, the application is useless, right? So you got to understand how are they logging in, where are they failing, what are the problems that they're experiencing, and build on that. So that's machine learning. We gather that data. We begin to apply the rules of machine learning, the min-max patterns, um, the, the various other patterns that apply to routing, uh, importance patterns, you know, and I could list 50 more, but I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, and then beyond that, now we begin the concept of taking all that machine learning data that we've built and understanding of what the customer has. And now we apply artificial intelligence. So we begin to look at what happens and the artificial intelligence takes the next step, right? Machine learning is going to respond, right? You and I are having a conversation. Uh, I suddenly decide to ship me a terabyte file. That's going yeah. to you know, decay the connection between us. With artificial intelligence, they might say, you know what, we think Tom's going to send this file to Scott. It's, if it's this file, it's a terabyte. We need to change how the network responds to, to Tom's connection so that we don't swamp it with that terabyte file, which, you know, would have swamped sure. it for a very short time period. But, yeah. but basically, anyway, it's a sort of a latter day quality of service gambit then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's quality of service on steroids. No, All right. steroids are bad. Sorry. And in the time we have left, I wanted to get back to the security question and the idea of that uh, turned inside out Tootsie Roll pop. And that gets us to the question of uh, per, uh, security strategy agencies are also pursuing, and that is a uh, secure access service edge. SASE, I guess, is the term that they use for that. And how does the next set of networking technologies, upgrades, modernizations support that particular approach? Well, yeah, and there's a bunch of other things underneath. SASE is kind of an umbrella, right? When we start talking about service edge, uh, and you know, Brian talked about edge computing, and and uh, Lamont and Brian both talked about users and and how do we access things. So the first thing under SASE uh, is is what's called zero trust, uh, and zero trust is a very important uh, solution set for organizations to consider. First of all, because what zero trust does is allows the organization to, well, trust no one. Uh, that reduces the risk the organization is going to have. Um, unfortunately, and Verizon publishes a report every year. It's called the DBIR. Um, it's a nice acronym. stands for Data Breach Investigation Report. I've read uh, it. Last year. In yeah, it's an, it's an awesome report. I, I highly recommend it. Verizon.com, DBIR. Anybody can download it. It's free to everybody. Uh, but last year, 2021, um, I have not read through the whole 2022 uh, one yet, but the 2021 um, report talked about the biggest security risk that we found. More than 50% of all attacks on corporate, government, and uh, uh, other entities that we deal with, more than 50% was what's called the person in the middle attack. I'm not going to use the old-fashioned sexist name of man in the middle. It's person in the middle. Uh, and the person in the middle attack basically is a, an attack where I send you a URL, right? Tom, your Amazon Prime has been canceled. You see that mail, you respond, you go, oh my God, I need my Amazon Prime. Uh, you click the, the link, you go out, and of course, you enter your username, password, nothing happens. Most users go, oh, okay, no problem. Close it, start again, don't even think about it. That right there, you just gave a hacker your username and password, and you didn't even think about what you did, right? So that attack, those kinds of attacks, that's something that zero trust will remove. You don't get the person in the middle of attacks anymore. But then as we expand, right, and we, we flipped the network, we had that hard Tootsie Pop, and the advantage of a Tootsie Pop is, for the most part, it'll protect you most of the time. The disadvantage of the Tootsie Pop is everybody knows where it is. With the move of the Tootsie Pop Center to the cloud, now all of a sudden you have this situation where you're actually physically being attacked in two locations. You're being attacked in your traditional network location and the cloud location. Uh, that's what the service edge begins to do. We, we look at how can we control the edge? Where do we put uh, security aspects? Where do we change how mm -hmm. users can connect? And what do we do with that? So it is a very critical thing uh, and something that does require a lot of consideration. Okay. And I'm going to ask Brian the last question. You've got 15 seconds only. What should agencies do first toward network modernization? I'll defer that to Lamont there to answer that question. That's a great question for him. Yeah, one of it is always understand your network, understand what you have, understand your assets. So then you can have a full picture of what you need to do 
uh, and then understand what your uh, what your uh, outcomes and performance that you want to achieve, so that then you can take all that into consideration to find the right technology, the right partner, and the right uh, solution to move forward with it to involve your involve your uh, your network. All right. Very rich discussion. We are out of time. I wish we had more. I want to thank today's guests. Lamont Copeland is the Managing Director of Federal Solutions Architecture for the Verizon Business Group. Brian Tromsky is the Managing Partner of Federal Government and Public Safety for Verizon Wireless. And Scott Anderson is a Distinguished Architect at Verizon Federal. I'm Tom Temin. You're listening to Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, please visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Verizon.